Hi everyone, welcome back to Crochet Rocks. Tracy here, and as you can hear, I'm back. Yeah. Oh, where's my thing? Ready, run it. I'm back. Good job I didn't do that. Nearly pressed the wrong button. Anyway, I'm back. Ellie May is back. And um, yeah. But only because I couldn't be bothered to straighten it. I might be back, but I'm not fully back. I'm not contagious anymore. But I am left with a horrible cough, which will linger. It will linger and linger and linger because that's what they do with me. That's what they do. Something to do with asthma, I think. But I can never shake them. Not for a while. And I can remember the first time I ever got covid Oh, what a nightmare that was. I had that cough and sore throat that lingered and then it turned a sore throat never went and I ended up with cancer. Remember that? I'm going to watch it this time, I'll tell you. Anyway, um, at least this time I didn't lose my taste buds. I didn't lose my sense of smell. And so what I liked before I got it, I like now, you know. I mean, it would have been a good favour for me to have gone off a cake chocolate biscuits anything sweet that would have done me a real favor didn't happen though it didn't happen oh well got a back to getting willpower i'm not quite there yet i'm still on the sucking of the lozenges so yeah I'm not quite there yet but i will get back on it because i need to lose weight before vegas baby <clears throat> I can't cough anymore, it really hurts. I cough so much that, um, yeah, everything aches in there. Just, as soon as I cough, it's like, no, don't do it. <clears throat> anyway, didn't sleep at all last night, so if I look as rough as a badger's butt, that is because I didn't sleep. And the only reason I didn't sleep was because I've slept for like three days. Um most of the day most of the night with the odd couple of hours awake and um i think my body said oh, my brain was like you've slept enough for a week don't try it again you know what, what you got you thinking so uh, i saw the night through and then this morning suddenly it was like i'm a zombie i'm a zombie and uh, i had to to try and sleep so i didn't get up until about half past two so what feels like morning to me is actually well five o'clock in the afternoon gary's making dinner feels like it should be breakfast but yeah a bit weird a bit weird really i'm kind of a bit um discombobulated word of the day <laughs> i'm discombobulated and i'm gonna put a fan on as well because it's stuffy in here i had to shut the door though because gary's cooking and you know that can be noisy just saying can be gorgeous but it can also be very noisy anyway so i'm so glad that i'm not um you know covid infested <laughs> but um yeah i'm gonna be whinging i'm gonna be whinging for a while about the cough so just be prepared just be prepared so um one lovely thing that happened yesterday, I think it was yesterday, you know what it's like when you haven't slept and then you slept the day away and you think, when was that? Was it yesterday? <clears throat> That's your brain. My brain's a bit... Um, one, the yarn addict, unboxed a big order that he made from Hobby Rocks. And uh, it was so nice. I didn't even know he was doing it. And because he knew I was ill, he didn't like to trouble me, <laughs> so he didn't tell me. And um, as I was walk walked in here and I looked up and I saw him showing my yarn. It was like a big ball of purple, special Aaron. He thought it was special DK, but it was actually Aaron. And um, so he was showing it, I went, oh my God. So I just like, come in and I joined the live stream at that point. Um, but then I went back and watched the replay to see the start and then get to the point where he showed my yarn and uh, it was lovely it really was lovely 
So he ordered two mystery bags, two mystery boxes, and he made a, a bit of an order before he did that. So he had three bags to um, open. I had to cram all those bags into a big box and send it off. But um, one thing I did do was because um, recently, I think it was because of COVID and lockdown and all that stuff. Do you remember when everything started getting really expensive to send? And they put all their prices up for shipping and it was getting ridiculous. And I've noticed some of them have come down. So I have adjusted some of my shipping rates accordingly. And it wasn't until Juan put the order in that I realised um, an order of that size, I used to have to send in two shipments because uh, of the, the extortionate rate of shipping. It's gone down. So that's cool. So, <clears throat> I don't even know what day of the week we're on. Hang on. So, like, like, time has just been... <laughs> it really has. So, hang on. It's Saturday for me. Sunday for you. So we're going to stick with Friday's double Grogu day. This was the double Grogu. But the actual weekend one was for this beauty. Not. But yeah, we prefer this one. We prefer this guy. Prefer this guy. That's my Mandalorian calendar. This was a present from Paul and Victoria. My, I want to have some Mother's Day or Christmas. Probably Christmas because it's calendar. But I show every day. Michael got me one that was like that. Do you remember it was like today's motto for the day? But of course it ran out. So I think it was only for about a month or so. So let's do the mum joke. You've heard of dad jokes. Mum jokes are like dad jokes, only smarter. So, um, yeah, we're quite a <laughs> I've got a long book here ahead of us. I also had... Uh, this was Happy Mail. I did have a dad joke book as well. It's over there, ready to take over when this one's done. I think it might be some time, though. So the dad mum joke of the day. Um, None of my children will ever appreciate how much time I've spent planning every moment of their lives. That's not really a joke. It's merely a, a statement of fact. I think when they become parents of their own, they do start to realise, I think, what you did and, you know, all the stuff, all the things as Jan, Juan, not Jan. It's actually, I think he was destined to be a Jan addict because it's like Juan, Jan. Renting a bounce house, bouncy castle we call those, just saying. Renting a bounce house for my kid's birthday is pretty expensive. But can you really put a price on the happiness I feel being left alone? Now that's more like it. We'll have a little... For <laughs> that one. Okay. Yeah, the other one wasn't funny, so I did another one. It was more of a statement, wasn't it, really? Statement of thing. Fact. Right. Now, I'm running out of places to put stuff. I've just filmed a yarn unboxing and... Well, I didn't unbox the box. It was just too heavy and big. And I did actually the first time put it there to do an unboxing, but it was just not working out. I was no, the box was so big, there was no room for me. So, yeah. Um, <clears throat> on the hard stuff again, look at that. Well, the funny thing was, although my taste buds weren't affected, um, everything tasted like medicine. Does that ever happen to you when you get ill? That whatever you have you, is this kind of almost like tablet -y, You know what? Sometimes when you take a medicine, there's that taste. Everything tasted like that. Everything had a bit of a weird aftertaste, like there was some kind of chemical in it. And tea. Tea, I just couldn't... I felt like tea bags these days have got like very dusty tea in and sometimes that comes out in your tea and when you get to the bottom you can see those little specks well unfortunately when I had a bad throat every one of those was like a granite <laughs> you know it's like swallowing it was like ah don't like that so I stopped drinking tea for a day or so I'm back on the tea now it tastes good again 
just saying so yeah um oh so um what have i got to tell you let me think um i put in another order for um some silky soft cotton yarn i've got quite a bit of cotton yarn now i think after that one i need to stop although i do need to expand the range of colors um <clears throat> i did say this in my unboxing actually that recently every time i order there's so much of it out of stock when they send it to me which i find a bit stupid really because they're a wholesaler you know and it doesn't say they're out of stock on their website um so that's the second stupid thing and the third stupid thing is they have say a minimum order that you have to you you know do to trigger free shipping so you've got to spend a certain amount to get free shipping which is annoying when you're a small business because you might not need that much you know you might not want to keep plowing all of the money you earn back in every time so um you've got to sort of make the count sorry it's just got really sunny i don't know if you can see the difference i should have a rainbow somewhere but when it's all out of stock they still send it to you with the free shipping and you think hang on a minute you know <laughs> it's now half the price it was you don't need to keep be charging me like if i wanted to just order that amount it would be nice to be able to you know i don't know the injustice of it all like <clears throat> so um yeah i've got um lots of orders to pack now thanks to Ron. Oh, he's so sweet he really is he's a lovely man and um i think he is just a breath of fresh air and if you haven't checked out his channel please watch that unboxing and give him some love and if you go and check him out and watch that unboxing tell him that tracy sent you because it'd be nice if he could see that um you guys come over and said tracy sent me that'd be cool so i've been doing a little swatch with that um bamboo yarn i didn't get very far because while i wasn't well i didn't want to crochet but i did want to see how it worked up because i said at the time that strand looked really thin but they are it's a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook that's what i used and it's perfect so it is the thinner side of the dk but it's beautiful it's so going to be such beautiful yarn for summer wearables really is you know how I love that Savannah yarn with the thick, um, silky soft cotton yarn? If you want a finer one, you won't get better than this. And that's the bamboo and cotton. And I do have some now in my shop. Just saying. Just saying. Just putting it out there. Just putting it out there. Uh, another little slurp. So yeah, <clears throat> the chicken soup that Gary made must have really worked because my voice is so much better today and I, I am you know see it off apart from the cough of course but I ain't gonna get gone for a long time unfortunately I really should have straightened this mop shouldn't I I should have just fought back the urge to Ellie Mae if I'd have put the Ellie Mae in when it was wet it would have dried nice but it's just <sighs> thick and fluffy never mind i was going to plait it but didn't look right these these scrunchies when i got them and i've got one here this is actually stretched out but they were if you can imagine really small like this and i thought they'd be perfect for bunches we call these bunches in the uk um, be good for bunches and perhaps plaits <laughs> but they're like massive so you know they're not they're not I need to get even smaller ones if I'm going to do that really they're okay for they're marginally okay for bunches pigtails but yeah I used to plead with my mum when I was a child can I have bunches now my mum was very set in her ways and my hairstyle as a child was long and curly with the top bit here pulled back and put in a great big horrible soppy bow. That was it. And she used to buy me ribbons. Oh God, I hated them so much. 
she's buying me ribbons and I used to say to her this is child abuse it really is but she wanted me I guess to look like Pollyanna I don't know but um I wasn't Pollyanna well I probably was Pollyanna I was more of a tomboy I was always out in the mud playing with the boys and football in my frillies you know getting a few of my knickers probably but you know that was it I was out there with the playing mud pies in my frillies I'd come in and she'd go oh my god look at you how how is it I buy all this nice stuff and look at you and I think well I'd rather just be on with my jeans on you know but poor mum she just wanted a dainty girl in fact, you know, the person I am now probably would have appreciated the, like, being all girly. But the kid that I was, <sighs> mud pies, I was the mud pie queen. She had this big stew pan. One day, I took it out the back garden and I filled it with water and started putting dirt in there and um, stones. And if I could find different coloured ones, they were like vegetables to me, you know carrots and some turnip you know and I'm putting all and I found some like dark ones for meat and I put me I was stirring this thing and making a stew like my mum and then obviously it was time for dinner or something so I went in and that was it and I forgot all about it and then one day she went out the garden and found her best stew pan with dried mud pie in it and <laughs> Tracy that was the sound of my childhood. <laughs> it was like, ting, ting. It was like, well, I didn't do it. But there was no one else, you know. My brother and sister were like 11 and nine years older than me and they'd flown the coop. <laughs> it was only me. It was like, <laughs> do you think dad did it then? She only ever went, ting, ting. but she never, you know. Once my mum slapped me, once. She never did it again. Not that I was going, <laughs> don't mean that in a threatening way, but um, I think she, her conscience killed her, basically, because I was her baby, I was. And um, my dad hit me once and she hit him. <laughs> said, don't you ever touch her? <laughs> she threatened him. You ever touch her again and I'll put a knife in you. So yeah, she was very protective of me, even though she had this voice like a fishwife. She was lovely, really. I mean, I do paint this picture of my mum. She was like a, a fierce dragon lady to all those that ever stepped, you know, in my path. And God, <laughs> woe betide you if I ever get my mother onto you, that sort of thing, you know. But yeah, she was lovely. I do miss my mum. Um, nothing really prepares you for when you have that awful day where you've got no parents again, you know. You're an orphan. Yeah. No one could get onto something more happy. Let's talk about yarn. Uh, what yarn do you think? I've got now some hand dyed yarn in my shop. So I've got some more. I won't say it's like the most expensive yarn either. Because um, I've paid 40 quid for some hand dyed yarn. You know that little grey girl yarn, that beautiful stuff? ridiculous price um but i did pay it and um so i know aficionados will pay a lot of money for even one skein of 100 grams of like top quality it was alpaca and silk it was beautiful beautiful yarn um hairy but beautiful so yeah i know it's not expensive expensive but to to me in my shop it's the higher kind of price range at the moment that I've got so I've got hand dyed yarn and I've got price wise for cheapness um, and I think um, they're great for when people make those charity blankets or for ISPCA you know that sort of thing things like that and Starcraft special ranges for like inexpensive yarn for projects so I've got that but what yarn do you think would be good for me to stock? I'm getting um, feelers out for new suppliers, but they've got kind of weird quirks, some of them. And I mean, I deal with 
the mainstays like King Cole, Starcraft, Robin, Peter Pan, Wendy, James C. Brett, the kind of usual suspects. But they're pretty normal in the way that you, some of them got little different quirks and nuances when you deal with a company. But some of them say, oh, you've got to order a pallet. And you're like, get real, <laughs> pallet of your yarn. <clears throat> I'm going to put a pallet of anything, you know. And when you're a small business, you know, it's like, pallet, you must be joking. So, and others say, oh, you have to order so many kilograms. And there are companies that make that really simple for you. You know, you must order 10 packs. Well, that's perfect. I understand that. But when you get all these people with this jargons, you know, I'm thinking, well, I don't know if I'm going to weigh that much, do I? I probably could work it out if I wasn't such a dimwit, but, you know, why should I have to work at it? That's what I say. You want to sell it to me, you work. That kind of thing. Anyway, what yarn, <laughs> get to the point, would be good for me to kind of try and sell. Now, I've got some Lion Brand now, I've got the Mandalas. I've got some Karen. I could get some more Karen soon. But um, UK yarns, or I mean, I I, <clears throat> I do have a, a supplier for sheepies. I'm not going to call it sheepies or whatever it is. Sheepies. Um, I'm going to get some more, I guess, at some point. But they're abroad, and you know what that means. That means duties and taxes. <coughs> Try not to cough because I really hope my musculature all around my, I suppose, diaphragm and chest and uh, everything aches because of the coughing. And I'm, it's not going anytime soon either. It never does. So hopefully, though, it will die down. Um, but at least I'm not. At least I'm not ill anymore. Thank goodness for that. And I survived. Lived to tell another another tale of covid i caught it you know before any drugs before any um when everybody was still um thinking of you as having the plague um there was nothing there were no no vaccinations or anything and we got gary and i got the kent variant and we got it <laughs> but you know what i never had a cough the weirdest, weirdest thing, I lost my sense of smell, taste, um, I had a sore throat and all that stuff. And then one day where I coughed. And I, and I th you know, I thought I just, that was a good escape for me because if I get a cough, <laughs> I'm going to say, I, um, I do get left with it. And so I was really grateful for the fact that I didn't get a cough. But this time round was a totally different set of symptoms. Although, I think the baseline, as soon as I was starting to get ill, I knew it was COVID. Because it has a different feel to it than any other virus, I think. And you can definitely feel that um, that difference. Well, I can. Um, but this time I did get a cough, so I wasn't very, I wasn't happy about that. Anyway, um, I survived. I survived. I was going to break into song. I will survive, but I can't do that to you. You love, you lovely people. Not only that, obviously my voice is so good that I would get a copyright strike. Hang on, I don't have to do that manually anymore. <coughs> that's what you would have done, obviously. But this, <laughs> uh, I tell you, I get the wrong buttons. I do still get the wrong buttons after all this time. I've got probably things that I should tell you and um, no, they've gone out of my head. I, I probably should have written them down, um, but you know, I haven't really done much. While I was ill, all I did was sleep, sleep and cough. That was it. Um, Gary was trying to look after, it was, the funny thing was, you know, when he was ill, I, I was looking after him. And then as soon as he was better, I was ill, so he was looking after me. And he was doing my meals and everything else. And I felt like all I was doing was, I was trying to eat stuff. 
and he was making me more and more food and I'm like I can't eat all this stuff but um yeah I certainly didn't go hungry that's for sure but yeah um today I, I've been craving um potatoes and I, I think the thing I really wanted um of all the meals I was mashed potato with a nice sort of thickish gravy like a um, not ridiculously thick but you know what I mean uh, not thin gravy and peas I didn't even care if there were no meat I was just I wanted the mashed potato and bit I love mashed potato and peas together garden peas sweet ones but um we've got minted lamb chops as well and so I'm really 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 looking forward to today's dinner it's one of my favorite things and it's cooked by Gary so it's gonna be it's gonna be gorgeous just saying he is a good cook is Gary I did not get this shape <laughs> living with someone who can't cook you know anyway it could have done me a favor couldn't it, it could have put me off of all the sweets but it would have been so wouldn't it be good if you could tailor make your virus and just say you know what i'd like is to be left hating custard and donuts uh, not together obviously that's weird but you know if you could just pick it you know please make me hate celery <laughs> i do anyway so i'm gonna have to anyway i'm babbling away in the corner about dribble oh that didn't look at all attractive did it I won't do that again. <laughs> and then I did it again. Uh, so yeah, <clears throat> thanks for watching. And if you're one of my new subscribers, I'm not normally this stupid. <laughs> I'm usually worse. Yeah, I am, if you can believe it. I'm usually funnier than this. <laughs> or is it peculiar? Funny or peculiar, I don't know. Anyway, I'll be gone. Um, but I am back, so um, please don't forget to tune in to your Rocks Chat tomorrow. And I will see you guys on the next one. And do not forget to go to watch one and say that Tracy sent you. Subscribe and give him some love. He needs it. And um, don't forget to watch my unboxing. I know I'm so bossy. Bye for now.